Greetings, my friends. Jimmer Linz here with your Source Filmmaker Tip of the Day. Today is Tip of the Day number 49. And as always, thanks for tuning in, for watching these, and for all the great feedback, and thanks for the subscriptions to my YouTube channel. In today's tip, I want to cover a um, an issue that I've seen a lot of people run across, and that is they are working with an animation, <clears throat> and they discover that at some point, for some reason, their camera simply will not work anymore, or any animations that they apply simply don't seem to take effect. And by way of demonstrating what I'm talking about, I'm going to uh, I'm going to puppeteer a camera moving around. Um, I've selected some time here, and I'm just going to wait until it gets into that time frame, and then I'm just going to move the camera around. So I'm just going to move around in a circle, and this is how I might record some crude camera movements. And then all of a sudden, uh, you can see the lines moving, but I'm not. The camera's not moving. Why is that? There's another effect that you can observe too. If, uh, for example, I go back here towards the end and I select some time. Let's say I want the demo's hand, his arm to move up. Well, you can see that the curve is moving. It's actually moved there, but his hand and his arm is not, there's no effect occurring. But if I do, if I select time earlier uh, and it, it'll work just fine. And I can, you know, I can animate a camera here as well. So for some reason, at around 67 seconds, people have discovered that their cameras suddenly stop animating and that they can't apply any motion to the models. And there's a reason for it, but it is not immediately apparent. And I will show you what I'm talking about. And this will only occur if you're using very long shots. And when I say long shots, I don't mean having the camera a long way from the subject. What I mean is, is if you're, if the time frame on a given shot is longer than 60 seconds, you're going to potentially run into this, and I'm going to show you exactly why. This is something I've covered a little bit in some of my earlier tips of the day, but again, if you double click a shot, you drill into it a little bit, and you see the animation sets that make up the shot. And as you can see, I've got two animation sets here. I've got the demo, and I've got the camera, and they both end before the shot does. See so if I go back up, we can see that the shot carries on for another 10 seconds. And that is why those things will not function after that. And any, anything that you would attempt to record after the end of the animation set simply doesn't get recorded. So there's a couple of solutions to this. One is to blade your shots and uh, that will create a new animation set like so. If I just uh, go back up and if I blade the shot about here, and then I drill into this shot, we can see that, uh, well, okay, I guess it didn't do it that way. Um, the animation sets will remain the same length, so that's not going to be optimal unless you want to create new animation sets. But what will generally happen uh, is you're not, it, this, the reason people don't run into this a lot is because most of the time people don't work with shots that are longer than 60 seconds. So if you find yourself running into this and you, your, your animation sets are freezing or your cameras are freezing, open up the, uh, the shot track group and just look here and you can actually just, just like a track, a, a shot, uh, or to me, yeah, just like a shot or the, the time wheel, you can just drag these things so that they are longer. And then if I go back here and I select the, the last five, 10 seconds of this and I select the camera. Now when I go and I, and I try to puppeteer this camera, the motion will continue to, to move around even after the point where it froze before. So I can then record until the end of the shot now and I can play this back and we can see the camera moving around in a rather silly circle. Or I can also grab the demo's arm and I can move it. Excuse me, and this time it actually moves. So there you go. If you find that you're getting running into freezing props and in, in when you're doing long shots, that's probably why. And again, the easiest way to access the track groups uh, associated or the elements associated with a shot, which will include all the animation sets and some other objects, is to just double click it. And uh, you will see then that there will be one of these tracks for each of the um, animation sets. These are channel tracks and each uh, each channel track will be associated with an animation set and it defines the, the time, the, essentially it defines the length of time that that particular animation set lives. And you can probably imagine there's some other stuff you can do with this, like set up things that will only be in the shot for a little while and so forth. Again, I encourage experimentation, but I also encourage you to save a lot because uh, Source Filmmaker does still have some bugs. But uh, for what it's worth, that is your Source Filmmaker tip of the day number 49, how to extend the length of animation sets so that you don't get frozen cameras and models. 
and run into all the frustration associated with that. I have been your host today, Jim Lins, and I thank you for watching. I hope you had a great day. I hope you have continue to have a great day. And until tomorrow, enjoy using Source Filmmaker.